Good morning, boys and girls. It is Miss Lisa here. I decided to do my recording outside today since I have my cool outside shades on. I hope you have been having a wonderful week. All this month, we have been talking about faith and how we can focus more on Jesus, even when we can't see him. Now we are learning that faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Now I have some really cool pictures to show you that if you look closely, you might see something else. They're called optical illusions. And I'm gonna show you and tell me what you see first, okay? Here's the first picture. Now, when you first look at this picture, what do you see? Do you see? It looks like there's two faces looking at each other, right? But now, just look, let your eyes focus on the white part. Can you see the vase? Pretty cool, huh? The white part is showing a vase, and the black part is showing two faces. You guys ready for the next one? This is one of my favorites. So, when you look at this picture, what do you see first? I see a duck. You see him? Here's his eye and here's his bill. But look closely. Can you see the other animal? That's right, it's a rabbit. Now, if you look closely, this is the eye for the rabbit, except he's looking this way and these are his ears. So it could be a duck or a rabbit. You ready for the last one? This one's my favorite. All right, so when you see this picture, what do you see? I see a young woman, and this is her eyelashes and her chin, and she's kind of looking off to the side, and this is kind of like her hair. You see her? However, if you focus and look a little carefully, you can see an old woman. You ready? Here's her nose, the old woman. She has two eyes. This is the old woman's mouth. And she's kind of looking down and away. Can you see the old woman? Isn't that wild? How sometimes we just have to focus and we can see things a little bit differently. Now, I sent some of my friends um, some paper glasses to color so that they could show off their really cool shades. So check out some of these awesome Sunday School Kids. guys have your glasses you are all ready to hear about today's Bible story so I'm gonna show you our Sunday school video and you're gonna see how Jesus used two men Peter and Cornelius to to show that Jesus's love is for everyone so check out today's Bible story the Bible it's 66 books of history Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 10. As the early church grew, Peter traveled from town to town telling people the great news about Jesus and how he healed sick people. Now in Jaffa, he raised a dead woman 
back to life through the power of God's Spirit. Tabitha, get up. Many people in Joppa became believers. So Peter stayed there with a man named Simon, a leather worker who lived right beside the sea. Peter often went up to the roof to pray. Ah, this is the life. Thank you, Lord, for all these fellow Jews believing in Jesus. But God's plan was bigger than Peter imagined. About 40 miles north, a Roman army commander named Cornelius was praying too. Lord, thank you for all you've given to me and my family. Though Cornelius was not Jewish, him and his family worshiped God. They freely gave to anyone who needed help. While Cornelius was praying, God sent an angel in a vision. Cornelius. The angel's power and brilliance was so strong, Cornelius fell back in awe. What is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Peter. He is staying with Simon by the sea. Yes, Lord. The angel vanished. Then Cornelius leapt from his feet. He called on two of his servants and a trusted soldier and told them everything. Leave at once for Joppa. Sir, yes, sir. The trio left around three o'clock, marching at top speed. Around noon the next day, they neared Joppa. At Simon's home, Peter had climbed up the roof to pray. Lord, you've done amazing things here in Joppa. What's next? Mm. <laughs> lunch is next, I guess. While lunch was being prepared, Peter continued to pray. And God sent him a vision, but it wasn't an angel. What is happening? It appeared to Peter that something like a large sheet was dropping from heaven. It contained a zoo of animals, pigs and camels, rabbits and birds and reptiles. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter stared in shock. The Jews were forbidden to eat the meats of these animals, which were called unclean. No, Lord, I will not. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. Do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. Two more times, the same thing happened. Then the sheep was taken back up to heaven. Peter blinked and looked around. What does it all mean? At that very moment, the men sent by Cornelius arrived at Simon's front door. Is there a Peter staying here? Up on the roof, God's spirit spoke to Peter. Three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I have sent them. Still overwhelmed by his vision, Peter hurried down the steps, ran out the front door where he found the men. I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? Sir, we have come from Cornelius, the Roman commander. He's a good man who worships God. The angel told him to invite you to his house so Cornelius can hear what you have to say. Go to his house? Just as it was forbidden for Jews to eat certain foods, it was also forbidden for Jews to enter the home of non-Jews. Oh! In that moment, Peter understood his vision. God was making a new rule about what was clean. The story of Jesus was not just for Jewish people, but for everyone. Please, come in. We'll leave first thing in the morning. The next day, Peter and the three men set out, along with some of the believers from Joppa. The following day, they arrived at Caesarea. This is the home of Commander Cornelius, sir. Thank you. Peter must have paused for a moment before he entered the house. Though God had told him to come, he had never entered the house of a non-Jewish person. Here goes. At the home, Cornelius had gathered all his relatives and friends to listen to Peter. Greetings, Peter. We are honored you've come. The commander lowered himself before Peter, showing a sign of deep respect. Stand up. I am only a man myself. As Cornelius stood, Peter surveyed the room before him and took a deep breath. 
You know that it is against our law for a Jew to enter the home of someone who isn't a Jew, but, but God has shown me that I should not say anyone is not pure and clean. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius had explained everything the angel had told him, and Peter shared how God sent Jesus here to share God's love. How Jesus taught and healed people through God's power. Then he would be killed. But then God would raise him back to life again. We ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people. All who believe in Jesus have their sins forgiven through his name. Amen. Praise Jesus. Glory to God. Before Peter could finish speaking, God sent his Holy Spirit down to be with Cornelius and his family and friends. The Jewish believers who came with Peter, they stared in amazement. But they're not Jews. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Peter baptized Cornelius and his friends and family in the name of Jesus. He stayed with them for several days, overjoyed by the new perspective God had given him. Wasn't that awesome? Jesus teaches us that we should love all people. It doesn't matter if they're different than us, or older, or younger, or look different, or sound different, right? Jesus died on the cross for all of us. And we should share in his love with everyone. Jesus' story is for everyone. And we are wanting to be more like Jesus, so we should love everyone too. So boys and girls, stay cool out there. Keep your shades on. Have a great week. Before we leave, let's close in a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to love everyone, to see you through everyone, through your eyes, Lord. Uh, thank you for the Bible and the stories that you share with us every week. In your name that we pray, amen. Bye, you guys. I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>